Hello Turks and Caicos, my name is Ali Carvey and welcome to Trailblazing Chats. Russian fire it like I'm in a hurry. Watch me turn my music to a tray where it's made. I tell them made in the TCI, okay? Made in the TCI, okay? Made in the TCI, okay? Okay, 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 okay. I tell them made in the TCI, okay? Made in the TCI. It's Ashley Bucks. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, just tell us a little, little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm native of Grand Turk, Grand Key to some people who know. Um, grew up there. Went to HJ there. Uh, I did my associate there at the college as well. Um, first born to Angela and Desmond Brooks. Um, but yeah, uh, always been a love of sports, love to be outdoors. Um, grew up in a church. Um, tremendous uh, family situation and uh, uh, yeah I mean that's pretty much me in a nutshell you know I love to have a good time I love spending time with my friends and you know just enjoying life yeah and you've been making a lot of news recently about your recent um, scholarship <coughs> could you just tell us a little bit about how you got into football and what you know sparked your interest in I th yeah I think my initial interest started um, back in 2012 I believe it was um, I saw the year when uh, these players, uh, I don't know if anyone was familiar with Andrew Luck, RG3, all those guys in the draft, and I just was enamored by the sport, um, and ever since then I've been following it. I used to buy all their jerseys and stuff, and I kind of started watching the sport more intently. Um, I started to take an interest to play myself, and so I bought a football. And me and my dad used to play catch all the time, and I just kind of fell in love with throwing the football, and that's kind of where it started for me. Okay. And obviously, football, American fo football especially, yeah. is not a huge sport yeah. in the Turks and Caicos. So how does it feel to be a trailblazer in this regard in this country, for this country? Um, it feels really good simply because um, I know that my story is inspiring to people, right? So as you say, um, it, it was an opportunity that I, 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 I kind of took a risk on, right? Because it wasn't, nobody was playing it here. You know, if you said to somebody, man, I want to play American football, they'll say, well, you got to move away, you know? And being able to accomplish that, not only on the collegiate level, but professional, I think speaks to, you know, just the power of being determined, right? So like, I could have e easily said, you know, I want to back out, I want to give up, just, you know, transition to something else. But, you know, it was something that I love to do. You know what I'm saying? And when you're passionate about something, nobody have to beg you to do it. Nobody got to tell you to keep going and keep trying. Like you do it out of your own desire and will. So um, it was very, a very gratifying feeling because I think it shows the young people that you can do whatever you want if you really and truly want it. Yeah. I think a lot of people think that, you know, journeys are very linear and to mm -hmm. reach a certain goal, you need to start at a certain point. But yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize, but you started off in basketball. Yeah, so um, I actually, when I left here, um, I had a basketball opportunity. So a program here in, in Providencia is by the name of Blazer Elite Academy, led by uh, Coach Ray Evans and Coach Harvey. Um, I did a workout for them after I graduated with my associate in 2013, because I, I really was at a crossroads trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And so I had the opportunity to go to Texas um, to play at an academy called COYM Academy. So I did that for two years, earn myself a basketball scholarship. But like, as you say, I mean, my, my love was football, you know? So here I was in a position playing basketball. And so it, I really had to sit down and say, okay, well, am I going to just uh, pout and complain about it? Or I say, all right, this might not be my end goal, but it's a stepping stone towards it, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so I took advantage of the opportunity and said, all right, yeah, this is what I have to do right now to get where I want to go. So I, I approached it with that mindset and, you know, I played college ball for three years. I mean, a lot, not a lot of people even say that. And that was a really good experience in itself, you know, traveling the country, um, uh, making really good friendships and relationships. And I think it really just made me an overall uh, well-rounded athlete. So, um, yeah, I mean, was it, was it hard to accept at the time? Yes, but I wouldn't change, change the, the situation. Yes, and recently you've been signed to the Timisoar 89ers. Yeah, so um, after, my stint in, uh, in, in Texas, 
I went to, uh, I decided to go back to school. So I went to the UK in 21, 2021. I went to go and get my master's, which I, I actually just finished. Um, and after that, I was playing for the university there. And I came across this platform called Europlayers. So basically, it's a free platform where you can upload highlights and teams in Europe would scout you. So I basically registered for it. And, you know, me and my teammates at the time, we like, you know, we want to start playing ball professionally. Um, and so, yeah, at the, I think fall 22, the following year, um, I signed my first contract with uh, Timmy Shore 89ers in Romania. Um, that was between, I would say, September to December, around that period. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know, I actually fractured my leg in, during that season. Wow. So um, I didn't even really play the whole season, but you know, I healed up pretty well, and thank God I, I had another opportunity. Following January, I played um, in Paris with uh, Ellen Court Templiers. Um, I did that for a few months. Um, and then obviously now, you know, I'm having the opportunity here in Italy with, uh, with the Bologna Warriors. So um, it's definitely been an exciting time. You know, I think anytime I sign a contract, you know, my parents are my biggest supporters. So they're all over Facebook, <laughs> my granny on Facebook posting it. So yeah, yeah it's, it's really exciting news and I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity. Yeah. So you mentioned your injury, you know, um, in life we have setbacks and yeah, you know, yeah. things that put us back. Mm -hmm. um, what would you have to say to someone who feels like they're you know, they've been put back with something and, you know, they're bouncing back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, that injury was tough. I'm not even going to lie. Like, that's my first time ever breaking anything. So, you know, I felt like a baby. And my first time ever being on crutches, um, you know, I had considered surgery. I didn't do it. I didn't have to do it, thankfully. But it was tough, man. It, it definitely, I don't know, as athletes, I think one of the hardest things we deal with is injuries. I don't know. For me, I just be miserable. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But because you, you think of it this, in this context, like you're going from a person that can do all these things at a high level athletically, physically. And then when you get injured, it's almost like you go to zero. So, you know, imagine being able to do whatever you want and then being able to do nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really interesting mind space to be in. So I think it really taught me just patience. It taught me, you know, to really value everything outside of what I can do athletically. Um, and so, yeah, that would, that would be my encouragement to people who go into adversity. I mean, nothing lasts forever, you understand? And even if you are in a prolonged situation, it's more about your mindset about it and how you approach it mentally, you know? When I first got hurt, it, you know, I was real down and depressed about it, but like, you know, my teammates, my, I had a support system to lean on. And I also thought about, you know what? I could use this opportunity to do something else, sharpen my skills in something else, you know? So I read a lot of books. I did a lot of things. And I just changed my perspective about it. I was on crutches for six weeks. So, you know, six weeks came and went. And, you know, now I'm back playing again. So it's almost like it never happened. But in the moment, you know, you got to stay mentally strong. So that would be my encouragement. Yeah, and going back to um, your time with the Timisora 89ers. What are you looking forward to most? Um, the thing that I like the most about traveling and playing ball is just the experience in different cultures, right? So, for example, when I played in Paris, I think Paris is probably on everybody's bucket list, right? And so it's like, it was on my bucket list in a way, but you never really know if you're going to actually get to go. And so when I start playing, I'm realizing, man, listen, these people playing for everything. You know, I, I get full, offered full, full, uh, full package with accommodation, food, health insurance, travel, all that stuff on top of a salary. So it's like, man, I get to travel the world for free, basically, and just play football. Um, I, I think that's the most fun part. And like I said, I love what I do. It's not a situation where I feel I wake up and I want to go train. I love to go train. I love to play. And everything else is just uh, icing on the cake. So um, I think, you know, it's, it's a perfect time time to take advantage of that you know I'm still I don't have any ex responsibilities you know children or anything like that so you know as a, as a young man you know still exploring the world I think there's nothing bad I could be doing yeah and how do you intend to share your love for this sport um, you know with this country you know with I guess potential athletes coming up in the sport yeah man so uh, I feel very passionate about that right um Man, listen, the road, the, journey, the road I had to take to get where I'm at was very difficult. You know, a lot of people don't know that. And I think that, you know, God puts you in positions and takes you through certain journeys so that you can reach back and help people who are trying to do the same thing, but, you know, help them to say, okay, you don't have to go this way or, you know, this is an easier route. So my desire 
um, is to use my platform, you know, um, I was able to make it professionally and like people, like I said, in, for example, in the UK, they have a agency called Play Overseas. And basically what they do is they, they help college athletes or people who are looking to like get a master's or bachelor's get scholarships and you can play sports, you know? And a lot of people just don't know about it. Like I randomly came across that on Instagram one day. I was just scrolling and I saw it. I decided to sign up and then, you know, within a few months, I'm going off to the UK. And I was just thinking, to myself, I was like, man, so many talented people are here. Track, basketball, soccer, I mean, the whole nine. And they're literally people and agencies out there that just want to give you money to come to school. You understand? And you can do your bachelor's, you can do your master's. And so I think my desire is just is to be that bridge between these opportunities and, and the, young keep, the young people here. You know, um, it's a desire of mine eventually to open up a nonprofit organization that kind of d- deals with that. So I want to I wanna do like mentorship for the young kids. I want to do athletic development um, and also like scholarship opportunities. Like, you know, so because I know a lot of guys here, you know, um, they're looking for a way out, you mm-hmm. know, and the thing it bleeds into so many things is, you know, the people who have nothing to do, you know, dealing with a lot of delinquency and stuff, that's how you end up with all the violence, all the just... Because guys have a lot of time on their hand, and a lot of energy, but they ain't doing nothing. You know, so if you're gifted in an area, man, I think, you know, you should be supported in that. And that's what, that's what I want to do, play my role, however big, however small. And, and, you know, giving guys the opportunities to maximize whatever it is they want to do. Awesome. And you mentioned your faith in God. Mm -hmm. How would you say that has been instrumental in your journey so far? Man, from the time I can remember myself, I used to be in church. You know how we grow up, like, I've been in church since I was, before I could walk. Yeah. But um, I think that, I think um, having a a strong foundation in my Christian faith Mm -hmm. is is kind of a, a grounding and centering for me. Right, so like, you know, speaking about my injury, speaking about um, going all these places, you know, it's it's still a lot that comes with it, you know. Um, and every single day, you know, you you need you need um, you need God in your life because, you know, we don't wake ourselves up, we don't bless ourselves with these opportunities. And I never, for once, to think that you know, oh, I'm in this position because of me, because I'm not. You know, I, I, anytime I speak to young people, I always, I always start my speech with like, you know, I'm not any better than you. Don't look at me and think that, oh, because I'm, I'm playing professionally or that I'm no better than you. Me and you come from the same kind of situations, you know? I mean, obviously people have different levels in life, but I'm not no better than nobody. I'm, I'm not above anyone, you know? And I think that my faith in God and, you know, understanding that, you know, none of this would be possible without him. None of this would be possible if I didn't have a prayer life, you know, and my my grandmother, my mom, my dad, you know, instilling that in me at a young age, you know, and it it definitely brings a peace and a protection over you. I truly believe that. And so, um, you know, I don't ever, you never catch me acting like, you know, it's me. It's not me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a vessel. You know, God, God gives us all, all of us gifts, you know, and he allows us to use them. You know, he lends them to us, basically. So, you know, I think one of the ways that I, I think that I honor God is, is through my gift. You know, I think everybody has a gift. And I think one of the ways you can honor God is to be the best at what you do. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't allow your gift to go to waste. And I think that's a form of, of, of really, I guess, adoration and, and just reverence to him. Like, you know, you bless me with this talent and I, I can treat this as special as, as that it really is, you know? So um, I, my, my Christian faith is definitely interwoven in everything I do. And, you know, it's, it's definitely holding me together. Yeah. So now that you've reached the highest level, you know, the professional level, everybody wants to go pro. And mm-hmm. you know, how do you keep yourself motivated? How do you keep yourself goal oriented? Yeah. And, you know, keeping your eyes on the prize? Like I said, I think if you love what you do, you, that's 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 it right there. You know, like I don't I don't I don't ever wake up and be like, man, I I, I don't want to go to practice today. I mean, definitely there's hard practices. You know, you don't want to run suicides and all these things. And but I, I absolutely love what I do. So, you know, my motivation is to to uh, you know I love competing at the highest level. You know, football is a really violent sport. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, it's a way you can release a lot of that. With what they call. Um, I can't remember the word, but like you get to, you know, uh, adrenaline. Yeah. You know, you get an adrenaline rush. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot going on. It's the ultimate team sport. 
you know, it, take, it, it takes a lot of collaboration. It takes a lot of leadership, you know, especially in the position that I play. I play quarterback, so I'm in charge of running the offense and stuff. You know, you, you have to be uh, cerebral to a certain level. And, um, yeah, I just love every aspect about it, honestly, man. Like, it's just, I just love watching the game. I'll watch football all day, play football all day. Like, that, that's, that's really it. And, um, yeah, so in terms of motivation, man, I, I, I'm, a com I'm a competitor, so... The, you know, just yeah. seeing somebody line up against me, that's all I need. Like, <laughs> I'm ready to go right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, you know, looking back on your journey, um, what would you say is the most valuable, valuable lesson that you've learned so far? Man, so many. Uh, most valuable lesson? I think I've, I've learned the most v valuable lessons at my lowest points, right? Because, you know, Everybody love you, everybody uh, cheering you on when you're at your highs, but it's like when you're at those low moments and you're by yourself. Um, honestly, man, I think my, my most valuable lesson was, you know, learning and re being reminded how important my relationship with God was, mm -hmm. right? So I think that, you know, because I, when I got hurt, you know, I, I was definitely at a really low place. You know, I'm halfway across the world, my family in there, it's only me. You know, a lot of days I just, laid in bed by myself, you know, and mm -hmm. I could call somebody, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z, but, yeah. you know, that when I really just, you said, you know what, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and fret about it. You know, I prayed about it and I asked God, you know, just give me peace about it. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember when I started, started to feel that peace to come on, it was just so surreal. I was like, man, you know, this ain't no fairy tale magic, nothing people talk about, you know, when you actually pray and you believe and you ask God to really, you know, step in on your behalf like mm -hmm. he really does that so I think man I was like wow you know I think it taught me you know don't just you know have that that relationship when you're down you should keep it always yeah and so I think that that's one of my most valuable lessons you know and so yeah. you know I've carried that throughout now and you know I don't ever take that for granted yeah and you know you touched on your you know your, your community your your parents your, your your sports system you know how important was it to have that support system in your journey? Oh, it's super important. I mean, my, my family, my parents are my biggest supporters, my sisters, mm -hmm. my four sisters. Um, any little thing I do, they, they cheering me on, they posting it everywhere and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, family is everything, man. Like, I, family is literally everything. Like, at the end of the day, it don't matter how many times you mess up, it don't matter what you do. Yeah. You know, everybody else will hate you, but you know that you can go home and say, man, you know, they, you can go home to open arms and, and some love. So, yeah. you know, I don't be home often. Yeah. So when I do come home, you know, I, I try my best to spend a lot of time with my family for that same reason. Yeah. And, you know, like what's what are some of the things that, you know, lessons and some of the 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 talks that you've carried with you from? Mm -hmm. You know, your community, your friends, your family, you know, that, that have kept yeah. you going? Um, I, think, I think it's mainly like scriptures and then probably like quotes be like, you know, I'd always know, treat others like how you want to be treated. Mm. You understand? I, I carry that with me. Um, or obviously, my prayer, like my mom always reminded me, you know, when you wake up first thing in the morning, when you go to sleep before night, you know, always, you know, talk to God. Um, and just being kind, you know, mm. I think that my family has taught me that, you know, being kind and being humble, you know, because some people get in positions and you get rich and switch, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I just being humble, being personable, yeah. relatable, you know, people love to know that, you know, okay, yeah, this guy is doing this, but I can still walk up to him and talk to him like, you know, you see me anywhere, man. Listen, yeah. I promise you, if you come to Grand Talk, you might see me riding a donkey, no shoes, no <laughs> shot. I, I live in my island life, brother. I live my truth. Yep. You know, I ain't putting on the front. Whenever I go home to Grand Turk, boy, I have a good time. Yep. I have a good time. Like, I don't, I ain't down there Versace. Man, listen, I am a singlet in shorts. Let's go. And, you know, I, I'm living my truth. I ain't here to put on a show for anyone. Yeah. And I think people appreciate that authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, so I always keep that in mind. Like, I think, you know, whenever teams or big companies want to sign you, like, they want to know who you are. Yeah. and make sure you're you, you know? So yeah. I think that I carry those things with me. Yeah. And, you know, how have you ha managed to have that balance between, I, I know you've mentioned that you have, you have your masters, you have your academic mm -hmm. um, achievements, as, as long with your sports achievements, I don't think a lot of people understand uh, the importance of having that balance and having those two things working together. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I mean, I can't play football forever. 
you know. So at some point, I'm gonna have to stop playing, and then you know, I'm gonna have to resort to something else. Yeah. So it's important to have a backup plan. Um, obviously, I'll make money from playing, and I'll, I'll use that to invest. But um, yeah, it's always been a goal of mine to to continue my journey educationally. So, like when I made that decision back in 21, 2021, that I wanted to do my masters. Um, I knew that I've always wanted to do that. So, you know, I'm very happy that I got that done. I'm considering my doctorate. I ain't no, I ain't no big writer, to be honest. I, I hate writing. I, you got to write a little book. Yeah. So I ain't know about that. But um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm thinking about it. I'm praying about this stuff. But, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's really important, bro. Like I say, um, especially in athletics, you can't play forever. You know, yeah. the, the greatest players don't play forever. Michael Jordan had to retire at some point, yeah. you know, and he had to segue into something else. So yeah. um, having that on deck, you know, because I'm, I'm a businessman at heart as well, an entrepreneur. So whenever I'm done playing, you know, that's kind of the lane that I'm going to transition into. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think we can talk about, you know, football without talking about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see yourself playing in the Super Bowl one day? So the thing about that is, um, so like for instance, example, the leagues that I play in over in Europe, mm -hmm. they're, they're different from the uh, NFL yeah. in, in U.S., right? So mm -hmm. um, I always tell people like, what, like they ask me what I, you know, want to play in the NFL, 100%, yeah. you know? So I, I'm never going to say no, but obviously at the same time, you know, I got to get to that point. Yeah. So I think the first stop, the first step would be actually making a team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, as a competitor, yeah. I, I ain't showing up to lose. I ain't joining a team to lose. I ain't showing up to be second place. Yeah. Second is the first to lose, yeah. you know? So, of course, I mean, Super Bowl championship, even with the league I'm about to join in Italy, like, you know, they have the, Ital the Italian Bowl, Bowl Italia, something like that. Mm -hmm. No, that's my goal. Like I, I I'm, I'm a, I'm a winner at heart. I, I, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm a sore loser, but I don't like losing. I mean, <laughs> I don't know anybody that like losing. Yeah. You know, my parents always get onto me, but like, well, Ash, you can't beat. I'm like, man, listen, I know. Yeah. I just never been okay with losing. I ain't never been okay with coming second. Like, if you can do it, like I said, if you can do it, do it. Like, yeah. Go all the way. Be, be your best at it. Give it your all. Yeah. Now, if you come up short, yeah. at least you could be satisfied that you know I gave it my all. I gave it my best, but. Yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I can definitely see that, you know, God gave me the opportunity to do that. Okay, awesome. And, you know, it, you know, you look at all the greats. So mm -hmm. You've seen, you know, those moments where they've had, you know, they've been, they've had, like, their, their, time, their down times, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. but you all, you all, you know, at the end of the day, you only see their successes. How would you say, you know, <clears throat> the lowest points of your, of your life have contributed to your success? Yeah, um... Like you said, I mean, I think people look at a lot success. A lot of people look at successful people and think they just showed up there. Yeah. You understand? Like, oh, you just woke up today and no, no, no. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, I was, I was hanging out with some of my boys yesterday, and they were just like reminding me, like, man, I remember when back in 2000 and whatever it was, man, I used to have your football mm -hmm. on the on the basketball court, bring your football to the parade. You know, yeah. I had man, listen, I had my little sister outside catching football passes for me bro like I used to do that for real like <laughs> my cousin my cousins used to come by I always used to organize with them yeah so I, I mean I ain't just show up doing this you know and like I said people people would say well oh you know you just know man I've been this is 15 plus years plus of work you know what I'm saying and that goes for a lot of situations I think even with you know people in, in different fields even you know with the, with this with this platform here mm. this ain't overnight success this is hours and hours and hours of work you know so you kind of look at I, I always advise people don't look at someone where they are now and think that's they just show up there you know and you have a different le a different level of respect a different level of professionalism when you really put in the time because you know you know what it took to got to get there made in the TCI okay made in the TCI Okay, made in the TCI. Okay, 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 okay.